Hey there, Caleb Logic of DIY Video Guy here. And in this video, I'm going to do another Ask Leb segment where I'm taking a question from someone and diving into way too much detail on how to answer it. So this question is from Greg in Scotland. So let's take a listen. Hi, Caleb, this is Greg from Scotland. And I was wondering, what's your workflow for using canning log? I seem to be having trouble getting the colors to pop when I'm using LUTs. Can you tell me what your workflow is and what programs you specifically use? Thanks. My first tip is that when you shoot in Canon Log, you're getting a really flat picture profile. So when you're looking at the back of the camera or in the viewfinder, it's not going to look very good. So my first tip is to turn on the view assist function, which is typically found under the OLED or viewfinder menu on your camera. Number two, if I'm shooting in Canon Log in a controlled environment like a studio that I'm in right now, I will use a gray card or at least check the skin tones of the person I'm filming and make sure those are hitting around 35 or 40 on the waveform monitor. I'll also turn on zebras so that if anything is going above 90 or 95, I'm making sure I'm not blowing it out because it's a little bit harder to see that when you're shooting in log. If you're filming with an external monitor or recorder, then you can turn on a LUT or a lookup table onto that device as well so that you can get a better prediction of what your video is going to look like after you grade it. Rec. 709 is a HD television standard of color range and spectrum. You can turn on a LUT to Rec. 709 usually in your camera or in an external monitor or recorder. I would caution you against using Canon Log when you don't really need it. So if you're in a controlled environment where you don't have really bright highlights or really dark shadows like we're filming right now, don't shoot in log. It'll save you a bunch of time in post. Also, don't shoot in log if you haven't used it before and you don't know what it's going to look like when you get it back on a computer. I made the mistake of shooting in log for a project that I didn't really know where my exposure level should be, and then I had to end up reshooting it. And don't shoot in Canon Log if you need to do a quick turnaround time or you just don't know how to do color correction and color grading using your, your video editing software because you'll just spend a lot of time trying to make the footage look normal when you didn't really need the extra information to save the highlights or the shadows. Now to jump into editing log footage, it gets a little bit more complex in your workflow to correct the footage from log to a Rec. 709 look but you can do it with lookup tables built into something like Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere Pro. If you wanna go further than that and do more color correcting and grading, some plugins I like are Film Convert or Colorista or Magic Bullet Looks. There are a bunch of different options out there. You can also just go into a color correcting specific program like Adobe SpeedGrade or DaVinci Resolve, and that gets even more complex. So for that, discussion. I'm actually going to throw it to Tim, who does a lot of the editing and color correction workflow for my videos. What's up, guys? Apparently, Greg wants to learn how to color grade Canon log footage. I think he said Canon, but we shoot in Canon. So I'm going to show you my process, how I grade log footage uh, going from Premiere to DaVinci Resolve, because I like DaVinci Resolve because I think it currently offers the best looks. So basically, the process you're going to do is you're going to export a Final Cut XML, weird, right? Even though you're in Premiere, but that's what's copacetic for both programs. Then you're going to open DaVinci Resolve, then you're going to import the XML, then you're going to go into the color workspace after you've created a sequence, and then you're going to create three different nodes, and then you're going to put a 1D LUT on the first node, then you're going to put a 3D LUT on the third node, and then you're going to color correct on the second node. Then you're going to export another Final Cut XML, then you're going to hop over to Premiere, you're going to import the XML, and then you're going to have to relink the footage using MP4s into Premiere Pro. For that reason, you're going to want to do the coloring at the end of everything. Um, that's all really complicated, so let's just hop over to ScreenFlow and I'll show you how to do it real quick. Okay, so now that we're in Premiere, we have our footage that's in Log, as you can see here. It's really flat looking. And what I've done here is I've just selected one clip um, that I want to work on in DaVinci Resolve. And then um, just for good measure to show you guys what's going to happen in the end, I added um, a cross dissolve at the beginning as well as one at the end. And then it's just one continuous clip. So once you have your sequence or your clips, whichever one um, you're going to use in the end, what you're going to do is you're going to go up to File and then you're going to Export and XML. And you're going to have to choose a Final Cut XML. So 
It'll ask me where I want to put that, and then you'll just navigate to it. I'm going to put it in a file round tripping, and I'm just going to call it start. So I know it's the beginning of my round trip. So I'll hit save, and it'll export that XML for me. So now I'm going to go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve. And it's going to take a moment. Oh, ooh, pretty colors, pretty colors. And then you're going to get um, like a welcome screen, basically. And normally I would sign into my account, um, but that's going to be uh, windows that you won't necessarily see because it's set up for how I work. So I'm just going to log into a guest account. So um, it'll see you'll see what you would when you log in. So I'm just going to start a new project and I'm going to call it um, color test. And then I'm just going to open it. And then what I'm going to do is go up to file and then import and I'm going to choose XML. So then I'm going to have to go find, oh, it's right there. I'm going to go back, navigate to it. I'm going to choose what I just exported in Premiere. I'm going to open it and then I'm going to get greeted with a whole bunch of settings. Um, normally you're not going to need to touch this. I'm just going to make sure that it's in uh, 1920 by 1080, um, Final Cut Pro works. You can also choose Final Cut Pro 10, um, but I'm just gonna leave it in Final Cut Pro. So it opens into my editing window. As you can see down here, I have multiple panels. I have media, edit, color, and deliver. For our purposes today, we're just going to use edit, color, and deliver. Um, so you can see I play it and it's still really flat and ugly and that's fine because what we're going to do is bring it over to color. So in color, uh, I'm just going to, this is just a generic window, as I was saying. Um, I have my shadows, midtones, highlights, offset, pretty much anything you would get in um, any other program. Um, it's not the interface that's different in here. They actually try to make it look like Final Cut or Premiere. What I really like is uh, how powerful the tools are. And then over here, you can choose what you want to see. I always go with my waveform monitors and then I either work with the vector scope or something like the parade, which I work with a lot. And then right now we just have, uh, we had the waveform up, but let's go back to the parade. And then what we're going to do is work in nodes. So I'm going to create multiple nodes here and I'm going to hit option S and then I actually want to make one more. So I create a lot of nodes depending on the project I'm working in. Um, but for today, I'm just going to create three. One's going to be, well, two are going to be for LUT and one's going to be my color correction. When I'm doing really difficult color correction or color grading, I'm going to create multiple nodes. So I'm only doing one correction per node and then you can grab them and drag them around and you can create all this, um, crazy web of nodes basically. And what resolve is going to do is it's going to move. Um, from one to the next seamlessly, but what it allows the editor to do us to do is we're basically working in layers like we would do in Photoshop. So if we don't like something, it's easy to remove and we don't have to start all over again. So um, just going to kind of bring these back together. And then what I'm going to do and what's really easy, you can do a correction in 30 seconds and I'll show you how right now. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna right click on the node and then I'm gonna to go to 1D node and then I'm gonna choose Canon Log to Cineon. Um, this is one I'm just picking because uh, I think it'll look good. Um, so I'm gonna click this and then I'll go to the third node and I'm gonna right click again and then go to a 3D LUT. And then I'm gonna go Ari and then it's gonna bring up Ari Alexa Log C to Rec 709. So I'm just gonna choose that. And already you can see it's uh, saturated it brought in the colors nicely. Um, so now I'm just going to correct what the LUTs have already done. So to do that, I'm going to go to the second node and open that. And then uh, what do I want to do about this? So if you look in over here, I can see that I want my shadows a little lower. I want to bring that down, but I don't want to crush that their black that they're wearing. So that's good right there. And then the highlights. I want to drag the highlights up so they're right around a hundred and then looking at this i see that um it's a little red and the reason it's pulling red is one i'm using a canon which turns everything red 
but two, there's also a high level of red in this shot. Um, so that's not abnormal, but what is abnormal is there's a white wall in the background. I don't really like that it's got this like red hue on it. So um, there's multiple things I could do. I could play around with the curves, do anything like that. But what I'm just going to do is I'm going to go to my offset wheel right here, and I'm going to pull away from red ever so slightly till right about there. So I'm not affecting uh, the true red. That's her gloves and her pendant and her lips, but I am pulling just a little bit of red off that wall. So if I play this back, you can see that it's nice and colored compared to what I brought it in. And now this is like a very easy correction. I'm just showing you how easy this is and how quickly you can do it. Um, I'm not going to go into how do you actually use this program and like color grading. This is just simply applying LUTs to log footage and then getting back to Premiere so you can finish your edit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my deliver and then I'm going to choose, I'm going to stay in QuickTime and then I'm also going to stay in ProRes 422. If it was something a little more complicated, I'd probably to choose Apple ProRes 422 HQ, but for now I'm just going to stay in 422. Check again that I'm 1920 by 1080. Frame rate's good. Everything's good. Render twice. Yeah, two audio channels. It's good. And then I'm going to go to clips and then I don't want to render all clips because it's going to pull in the original non graded footage as well. I'm going to choose graded clips. So after I do that, I'm going to hit start render. Start render. Oh, my bad. So you're going to add your render queue first of all. And then I'm going to just navigate back to that folder. A lot of pull downs, put it in round tripping, hit OK, and then I'm going to start my render. So it's a short clip, so the render is actually going to go pretty fast and I'm on a nice computer, so that helps out a lot. Um, so I've rendered the clip and it's exported and now I am going um, to go back to the edit. And I'm going to go, I'm going to make sure that you can see here. Um, this is the non-graded versus the graded. So there's a big difference how flat this looks versus how uh, this just pops off the screen. Really nice red hair and the red pulling out on against the black. It's uh, looking really nice. So I'm going to go here. You'll see a check mark saying that it's rendered. And then I'm going to go up to file. And then I'm going to export another XML. I'm going to choose where that's going to. So I'm going to put it with my other XML in round tripping and I'm going to name it um, let's name it end since I named the other one start um, so I'm gonna go there it'll export for me and now I am going to go back to Premiere so what I'm gonna do is just go into this miscellaneous bin that I have in Premiere and I'm going to import and then I see this it's end my XML is there Boom, pull it in, it'll import it, it'll bring in all the information with it. And as you can see here, I have the clip and I have my sequence. So all I'm gonna do is open up a new sequence. Let's zoom in here so you can see it. And so now you can see that I have nice graded colored, no, I shouldn't say graded. I have nice color corrected footage that once, as you can see, was log and not very nice looking. Now it just pops off the screen. And as you can see, because I did XMLs, Premiere ha or DaVinci has kept my cross dissolves that I had on the beginning and the end. So you'll see it fade out nicely. And that's it. So now that I have this back in Premiere, I'll just start working off this sequence and I'll continue to build. Normally I'll color um, after I have my first edit down and I know that I'm ready for color. And then if I, knew, if I know I'm gonna be doing advanced effects because during this round tripping process, if I have advanced effects in my sequence, DaVinci is not guaranteed to export those. So I might lose some of those effects and I might have to redo some work. So if I know I just have a generic sequence, something like this, where it's just some cross dissolve, some fades, things like that, um, then I'll do it at the end. But if I'm working with more advanced stuff, sometimes I'll do coloring somewhere in the middle of my process. But that's it. And I hope that works for you guys. 
So that process is how I like to do it. As I said before, I do it that way because I work in Premiere. I like it as an editing software. I don't really like to edit in Resolve, but I do like to color in it. I currently think, um, especially using Canon log footage, that's just what uh, looks the best. Um, I know people on YouTube, like everyone's gonna be like, Tim, you're working in Premiere. Why don't you just use SpeedGrid? Oh, yeah, I could. And then you're gonna be like, well, why don't you just use like Lumetri? Cause it sucks. And then it's like, well, why don't you do this or this or this? It's like, I know, I just, I know. But that's why I do it. If you wanna leave all your little comments about like, oh, I'll do it this way, Jake, that's fine. Go ahead and leave them. But that's how I like to do it right now. I'm always open to learning more. Um, the reason I don't use SpeedGrade is because I don't really like it. I think Resolve works better. Thanks again, Greg, for the question. I hope you and anyone else that watched this learn how to shoot in a log profile and then take that into editing and make it look really, really good. So for more videos and detailed reviews on camera equipment, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've been Caleb Wojcik of DIY Video Guy, and I'll see you in another one. I don't remember how to stop it because I've never used this program before. My name's Greg, except Greg's from Scotland. How the f*** do you stop this? Oh my god, thank god.